left you waiting in a winter storm Hurt me to hurt you Don't keep crawling back to your control Sweet talk, but I know you So I draw the blinds, babe I won't draw a blind eye All your words contaminate Left cause you don't even try Play like you're a renegade When your views are not in line with mine السلام علیکم اینڈ ویلکم بیک ٹو دا لف پوڈ کاسٹ آج میرے ساتھ ہیں ماریا اونیرا ہاؤ یو ویری ویل ہاؤ یو ڈوئنگ گڈ 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 ٹو ہیو یو ہیئر گڈ ٹو بی بیک آفٹر فار ایور یا یا اٹس بین اٹس بین اے وائل یا آئی ایکچولی ڈونٹ ریمبر دا لاسٹ ٹائم آئی تھنک آئی جسٹ سیڈ ٹو ایئرز ارلیئر جسٹ لائک آئی تھنک ایٹ واز پری کووڈ ایٹ واز پری کووڈ سو دیٹ ووڈ میک ایٹ لائک آلموسٹ تھری اینڈ اے ہاف اور تھری وٹ ایور Oops. Time's flying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But you've been busy with lots of things, it yeah. seems. Yeah, here and there. Yeah. I try to... I mean, I think after lockdown, it just sort of became that moment where I'm like, oh my God, I got to learn how to do everything. Yeah. And so I learned how to do everything. I mean, what, <laughs> what, what were the things that you I think, learned um, in lockdown specifically? I think I did, and I... S- speak about this quite often at most podcasts that I literally had to do a crash course on how to become an influencer. Hmm. How do I make money, basically? Yeah. And uh, COVID lockdown led me to that, to hmm. sort of understand that, okay, these are the ways. Number one, swallow your pride <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, and be comfortable with doing new things. Yeah. So, yeah, I think that was the major... thing that kept me rolling in mm. terms of meeting new people, learning about content creation, understanding social media. Mm. I'm still trying to understand it, not gonna lie. Mm. I do get lazy. Mm. Um, but yeah, that yeah, is... And, and, and lately, like, running your own show. Running my own show. <laughs> yeah, that's... Yeah. Uh, we'll that get to also, that. So, yeah. you know, in the tradition of this podcast, yeah. why don't we take it to the beginning? Yeah. What, wow. like, got you into... wanting to sing and perform and, you know, write songs? Well, uh, professionally, I started when I was 16 years old. Mm. Um, but I think singing has always been a part of my my life. Yeah. I mean, it's in my blood. My mom used to make me and my brother sing a little too much than usual. All right. um, <laughs> like every Filipino show, every gathering, every Sunday, karaoke. Yeah. Karaoke was... mainly like our sort of practice run practice yeah. session you and know. did were you um growing up in the philippines or this in, was in okay. islamabad okay this was in islamabad and uh, my mom used to basically she was the i want to say the vice president or something about yeah. the filipino community she was oh. one of the nice. the she was in the leading department mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so she used to host a lot of these We call it Filipino parties, but it's not actually a party. It's a legit event. Mm. It's like, you know, you got to get tickets made. There's a raffle. There's like special Proper numbers. Organized. The special numbers was me and my brother singing in Filipino, not knowing a single word <laughs> of what we're singing about. So I kinda, it kind of generated there. Yeah. And then uh, I did a couple theater plays when I was 13, 14. And then I think when I turned 16 in high school, I used to take my guitar mm. to school a lot. And my mom had taught me four guitar chords. And she said that this is all you're going to need mm. <laughs> to like work. You just have to figure it out, work, yeah. work around it. Yeah. I think the first song that I learned was Knocking on Heaven's Door. That's pretty, I think so. That's, that's pretty interesting because that's probably one of the first songs I learned. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, you can't go wrong with that. It's a yeah, pretty... I mean, it was just like a couple of 
cover bands in schools yeah. did that song yeah. and and I was like oh I want to hear the original this yeah. is a cool song so funny <laughs> enough I heard it's just it's like I mean you're talking about Guns and Roses and then you go whoop yeah. um I heard Ever Levine yeah. cover that track yeah. yeah and that was when I'm like hey exactly what you just said I got curious and I learned I heard the original and then I learned it yeah and that was a moment my mom's like these are the four guitar chords. Yeah. Just mess around, yeah, play around, see whatever. Yeah, knocking on has all of them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, 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 you know, I, I, the whole tradition of, oh, my guitar liquor down at school, or my lonko and press huh. Um Yeah, it didn't work out. I actually got a lot of, like, bullied by, like, oh, this girl, she just sings. She just she doesn't go to class. She just sings. But mm. I, But I embraced it, not yeah. gonna lie. So it kind of generated there, and then after a lot of busking after school. Yeah. So my mom um, would get done from work at four or five thirty p.m., mm. and I knew that I had this window from like when I would get off of school, which was probably like one or one thirty p.m. Yeah. So from one thirty to like five, I'd be like mm. okay, I want to dedicate this to music so that when mom comes back from work, I can mm. show her all that I've accomplished nice. today. So she is. She was very encouraging. Um, in regards to that. So I used to go to a park that was actually right behind her office at the time. Mm. And I used to just sing songs randomly. I would learn them. People would go, people would be passing by and just be like, oh, a little girl just playing. I mean, I was 16. I was a baby, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, So it kind of generated there and then gigs, little house gigs here and there, uh, cafe gigs. And then one thing led to another. It was just this cycle that just, I yeah. think I was also just going with the flow. I never really planned. Yeah. Um, I knew that I wanted to sing professionally mm. and I wanted to have, uh, you know, work on my craft. Yeah. But every opportunity that came along with it was just... Mm. Another step. Yeah, it was like know. just flowing. And I yeah. don't think I I denied it at any point. I mm. just kept... Obviously, my mother was someone who used to push me for it because I was an extreme introvert Mm. and I didn't know how to express myself Mm. any better. Mm. So she used to give me that push. Mm. It kind of just started over there. So at what point did you start writing your own music? So not not too long ago. Lyrics and songs, yeah. Um, I think I got comfortable with the idea of sharing my words with with the world. Um, I want to say... Eight years ago, okay, when my mom got sick, yeah. that was when I think I was like, okay, like I think when 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 you're going through something so intense in life, the g- most genuine words come out, especially yeah. if you're an artist yeah. or yeah. you know a writer. So I think that was that phase where I was obviously I was twenty twenty going into twenty one year old mm. years old, trying to like you know come terms with my emotions and like phrase things better that doesn't sound too childish yeah and my mom actually helped me uh a lot in in my first song which was strong Mm. that i was uh able to share with the world yeah um yeah i think this was this was um post nescafe oh yeah yeah. this was post nescafe this was this was during but post my first season with nescafe and that was when I think also Nescafe gave me that push to be comfortable to play live and, mm. you know, play in front of a lot of people. Mm. Like, I think it was different when you're, when, when I used to do cover songs, it was very different. It was like, you know that, okay, this is a song that this person knows or that person knows or these people know. And yeah. so you don't feel alone. Yeah. And the insecurity doesn't come yeah. into it. You know. But when I did Levi's Live... Uh, that was the first time I sang strong and I wasn't even supposed to do strong mm. that day. I was going to like, I literally made a random like mm. cheesy song backstage, my but my friend at the time was, who plays with me, um, who played with me in the performance. She, she was like, what are you doing? What are you, what are you, what are you why are you, mm. you have to sing this song. It yeah. is so fresh for you yeah. that you need to, you have to A, let that emotion out for yourself and B, you got to just, just do it. Mm. Like, screw it don't think too much about it and i think not thinking too much about it ga- made me comfortable with the yeah. idea of sharing it with the audience that's yeah i mean that's usually how it how it works yeah but let's take a step back and so what led to the nescafe opportunity happening that was also very random yeah that was really random so when i when i uh 
when I turned 18, or I think I was turning 18, I mm. went up to my mom and I was like, you know, I'm not a dumb kid. I'm a pretty bright kid. And mm. just because my grades aren't top notch doesn't mean that I am dumb. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like I know what don't I don't judge me on my I like, Mama, I know what I want to do. Okay, I know that this is a, a lot like better said than done or whatever. Mm. But I know that I can prove myself as an artist mm. for you to believe. I mean, it's not that she never believed in me. She mm. she obviously wanted me to excel and and go out of the way and cross certain boundaries for yeah. my own. Like, yeah. get out of my comfort zones and stuff. She wanted me to do all of that. But obviously, a parent is a parent. They always want you to finish your education, right? Mm. But I walked up to her and I was... I just sort of said that, Hey, man, <laughs> like, if you let me do this, yeah. um, I'll prove it. I'll prove yeah. myself. And yeah. then and then you'll see that I can actually make a living out of this mm. and make something stable out of this for myself. And mm. she gave me a... She We literally had a... This was... I remember this was... A, on the dining table and it felt like a conference like it felt like <laughs> a meeting. negotiation like it felt like a negotiation where where like my brother is there in the background my dad's watching tv and i'm just like all parties listening yeah. <laughs> like you know and i asked her and i said um this is what i want to do and i promise i'll prove prove myself to you and she said okay i'll give you three years hmm. in these three years you have to learn something new every day when hmm. it comes to music technique wise hmm. whatever wise um you have to land a big project mm. i don't and I, by big project i was just like that could mean anything mm. like what does that even mean mm. like a big gig because mm. all i knew related to music at the time was playing at cafes i didn't yeah. know that you could like perform at arenas or yeah i don't even know what a recording studio was like the closest yeah. thing to a recording studio i had ever been to at that point was and i kid you not a little recording karaoke booth in the middle of the shopping mall in Manila, Philippines. <laughs> that is the closest thing I knew to a recording studio. Wow. Well. You know? <laughs> so we shook hands and I said, done deal. And then at the end, she's like, but if you don't, I'm going to send you to boarding school. Then you'll have to finish and get a degree. And I'm like, oh my God, okay. I don't even Pressure know. What is on. I was just like, I don't know what that means. <laughs> but I think my luck was really good because two weeks later, um, I got a call from my school and they're like, there's a, there's a gentleman here who's uh, looking for you. And I'm mm. just like, my brother, my dad, like mm. what? They're like, yeah, there's, there's a musician here. He's looking for you. Uh, actually, there are two musicians and their entire team and cameras and this and that. And I was just so confused. And I'm like, can you just call my mom? I, in my defense, I thought I was being like sort of trapped uh, into right. coming back to school. Right. Um, but my mom called me and she was like, meet me at your campus in so at so-and-so time. And I show up and it's lots of cameras and the band Nuri and Ali Hamza just standing there staring at me. And he's like, you're a very special little girl. And I just looked at him and I'm like, okay, but who are you? <laughs> like, I, I don't know who you are. I'm so sorry. Like, who are you? And then they sang Sari Rat and I was like, oh my God. Because I, oh, see, those what, guys. Yeah. I think... Their version of Coke Studio had just come out at that point. That became a big hit. Yeah. So that song became, that version of Sari Rath became yeah. such a big hit that I instantly learned it. And then I got to do this big project with them um, where my mom was like, okay, this was luck, but mm. you know, I need more. Mm. And through that project, I got to meet a lot of musicians in Lahore. And what I was think that project? It was like a, a thing for Fanta. It was okay. like a it was a show that these had signed on right. with and they needed to get like a bunch of kids mm. and do a song and give them the full experience. Okay. Uh super branded. Yeah. Super branded. I mean, I was 17. I didn't yeah. even know what I was doing, but I'm grateful for that experience because obviously that opened doors for me in ways of meeting new people, mm. learning about the industry, learning about the people yeah. and like you know so many factors that yeah. came to play after that and so i met a i met this drummer um who's who turned out who became a really good friend his name's kenny mm -hmm. and he he used to call me well a lot of people call me choo choo because they think i am like a little bird <laughs> this is my definition of it i actually don't know why they call me that but so he he once wrote to me on facebook and he's like yeah choo choo and I'm just like, what? No, are you crazy? Season two of Nescafe Basement had just come out yeah. and I had fallen in love with Altamar Saver 
for Sweet Child of Mine, their <laughs> version of Sweet Child of Mine. So I thought that, that was pretty cool. I was yeah. like, okay, yeah, you know what? It would be kind of nice to, to, be, to, to be a part of this. But I also thought it was too good to be true because I was also very aware of how English singers were frowned upon. <laughs> right. Right? No. And, I mean, I'm talking about 2012, hmm. where, I mean, underground scene was completely dying. Yeah. Um, no gigs were happening. Yeah. It was, Pakistan was going through a really tough time. YouTube was non-existent. Yeah, yeah. All we had was YT, Pakistan, .com, and Vimeo, <laughs> and Facebook. Yeah. Right? So, I put up this video of Skinny Love by Boniver and... Kenny shares it with Zulfi and in the middle of the night I get a random message and I'm just like, this is not real. Mm. But yeah, one thing led to another. I I was like, what's the worst that'll happen? Like, nahi huh. So I just responded and I was like, hey, what's up? And he's like, do you know the song Crazy by Norris Sparkly? I was like, do I know that song? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, hell yeah, I know that song. So yeah, so then, then conversations and then yeah. I don't know, two weeks later I was in Lahore. Hmm. And that's kind of how I got into... <laughs> then how was the experience? I mean, I'm sure you must have met a ton of more it was contacts and yeah. musicians. It was, it was definitely you know. overwhelming because, like I said, like I didn't know the first thing about yeah. collaboration. I, yeah. I didn't even... Because even with the Nuri project, like everything was already done. We just mm. had to show up and basically be, to, be told to do what, what mm-hmm. they wanted us to do. Mm. With Zulfi, it was like a whole... Like he really... Zulfi Bhai really, really cared about your opinion. Hmm. He really wanted to sit down and level with you and, and wanted to know what do you feel when you want to... And that for me was comforting and that hmm. for me was new and that was when I was like, okay, I could get used to this. This is this is a modem of work that I'd like to yeah. learn from and like learn how to deal with and, and enjoy it at the same time. Yeah. So yeah, that was definitely a factor that came into play. Um... Hmm. meeting so many musicians we all used to live in this one they kind of like booked the guest house so we, yeah. that whole floor above was just ours yeah and we were such nuisance to them i'm so sorry I don't know if they would ever watch this those guys those i don't even remember the name of the, the guest, guest house. house people yeah but we really made their lives miserable um but yeah it was a fun uh, experience and then briefly there was a all girls yeah. band too so that was season two uh, sorry yeah. that was season four right um, that was my second season with them. Yeah. I wasn't intending on doing that season, to be fair, because my mom was really unwell. And right. between my brother and I, we used to take a lot of shifts. But my mom was super adamant for me to do it. She was like, look, I don't even know the full idea, but this sounds like if they've come back, that's mm. got to mean something. Mm. That's got to mean something within you. Mm. And so she really gave me that push. It was tough to be away from her for for those couple months, but... Yeah. I'm glad that I did because something incredible came out of it. I got to meet nine other female musicians who also were just as clueless as me. Yeah. Completely <laughs> lost as me, you know, but as determined as me. So it was cool to have um, mm-hmm. the same gender feel the same way because up until that moment, it was tough for me to relate with a lot of musicians in Pakistan because I would look around and it would just be a lot of dudes. Yeah. So it was tough for me to sort of like get my point across or understand theirs. Hmm. So it was nice. It was nice to to bond and get to know uh, female musicians and singers because for once at the time, like, you know, it felt like, okay, I'm on the same page yeah, yeah. with them. And that was a fun, that was a nice, yeah. cheeky little... Yeah, it was, I mean, I think a lot of people expected that that might become a thing. Yeah. But, you know, it was just I think like also, a little drop... I think I think it could have become a yeah. thing, but I think a lot of I don't think any of us anticipated how huge that was gonna become. Yeah. To be fair. Because we had incredible amount of songs and musicians um that season. I think it was over forty plus hmm. musicians in that season. Or more maybe, I could be wrong. Hmm. Um so we didn't really think that that song specifically or that video or that idea specifically was going to go as yeah. huge as it did under a week. Um, so none of the girls anticipated it. Obviously, we didn't. I had some experience by then about brand endorsements mm. and record label mm. uh, signings and this and that. But those girls, like, they didn't know any better. They, yeah. they had their own individual plans. Like, mm. 
one wanted to go off to college the other one was still too young mm. to like you know which at the time to be fair i used to wonder i'm like how can someone let their kid be on national television but not let them sign with a record label <laughs> i used to think that but but now looking back at it i'm like okay i get it because it's it's like it's like okay yeah i mean as i look thinking about it from a pr- parents perspective also i'm just like okay maybe they they were just saying ha huh, bachche ko karne do kya pata so but you guys then, were offered some kind of deal yeah. at that point yeah multiple right i was fully like on board i remember yeah. calling zulfi by every day i'm like okay but like what what do i got to do if mm. if i want to do it w- mm. how can i get them to mm. speak to me mm. um but it was it was mostly i mean for for the record labels and the and all of the yeah. offers that we got the the deal breaker was all 10 or nothing right yeah. all 10 girls from pakistan or nothing yeah Um so it was that Because was that, a bit, that was the novelty factor yeah. of it right yeah. yeah but obviously at the time um I was a rebel and I just was really <laughs> upset I was just like, mm! <laughs> like yeah. I was like no these girls are being selfish <laughs> <laughs> but but I mean obviously I I mean it I think I also tried to understand or try or didn't understand rather because I was just like I dropped out of high school, no plans of university, just wanted mm. to do music. Got saw this opportunity and I was just like trying to catch it but didn't realize that there's just some things that you can't chase after. Yeah. You know. I mean also so what do you think about the you know the the fact that a these girls came together but then they weren't able to get the permissions or yeah. you know they were too young or whatever. So is cuz now as alif we've been doing you know music and trying to get support the community and get musicians to come in and there's barely any females right? yeah. so how much of that is the fact that they're not allowed or there's some male in their household yeah. that you think is yeah. not letting them go out there and how much is the fact is it the possibility that females just aren't as into performing and singing and playing music you know so i think Um cuz I don't really know to be honest. The former yeah. Yeah. about household not letting them that is still a factor because we have to also remind ourselves where we live and yeah. the culture that we live in. That will always be a factor. Of course. Like to this date my dad he knows I'm 29 almost mm. and he knows I live alone. I'm an independent woman. I earn for myself, but to this date he will make it a point to be like you know you shouldn't wear this you should wear this don't be ye acha lagta and i get irritated because i'm like dad mm. like what do you know what do i wear when yeah. you're not around for all you know you could just be thinking ki ha meri bachchi to like you know like hypothetically speaking right yeah, yeah. so that factor will always yeah. be there but i think women do want to step out of their comfort zone and they do want to perform and play mm. music but they need to see For example, if we speak about Alif, mm. if they see a female leading an initiative here, yeah. I'm 100% certain that they will come and at least check it out or yeah. have an orientation of yeah. it. Yeah. I think that really what what the bigger question is how many females do we have leading uh yeah. the yeah. initiative yeah. rather yeah. than how many females do we have who want to do it? Because right. it's starting to appear like We don't know if 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 guys want to do it or not mm. and by it it could be in anything. Yeah. I think it has something re- a lot to do with leadership because like I said like when I did Nescafe Basement 3 it was mm. just dudes around me. Mm. Um even when my collaboration with Nuri it mm. was just dudes around me. Mm. So it was tough for the dude to understand me. Right. And vice versa. Yeah. So I think um I think having uh someone who takes the initiative um that's the bigger question yeah, who is yeah. there to actually put their foot down and be like hey i'll leave because i've i tried this experiment mm. and i did a little show at 432 where we called it make some noise just because i was like give the gigs to the chicks like that was like my motto <laughs> <laughs> like just give the gigs to the <laughs> chicks it doesn't matter how good or bad they are there's no such thing yeah. everybody needs work everybody needs practice yeah um you know practice does make perfect but sometimes practice is just good for you practice yeah. is just practice yeah. and and i saw the the enthusiasm mm-hmm. amongst all the females who did come up, 
mm-hmm. come around and wanted to work. And I remember I wrote to Nimra and I she wasn't even in Pakistan, uh, in Islam, uh, sorry, in Karachi. Mm. And all I said was gig, so and so date, all girls, are you in? And mm. she didn't even like say a chakab, a chakon, a chaye. All she said was she's like, ha, fit hai. Batao. Oh. And that is, I think that is where, you know, women need to stop questioning and asking ki yaar opportunity nahi mil rahi yaar wo opportunity tab milegi when you make it for yourself exactly you know? that's a that's a very important point actually yeah. i mean it also applies just as much to bands Absolutely. bands that are looking for shows yeah. and they don't have the balls to yeah. put up their own show and Absolutely. have to face the fact that maybe just five people will show up yeah but you'll play a show you know you'll play a show and you keep doing it more people will show up exactly you know? and i think consistency 100 like we have a group on whatsapp and it's a very closed inclusive like just mm. the women of music it's literally called women in music yeah and it's a great initiative but it is also a reality check of how many girls out there actually have that talent we and i'm speaking like we have miss tina sani Hmm. to Hadika Khani to Misha Shafi so to about QB. like how many people you have in this oh group? my gosh like I could show you I think we have over 70 80 that's really good plus yeah girls women <clears throat> from all over the country hmm. you're famous or not famous you're influential or not influential hmm. xyz jobio hmm. um what's up hmm. like everyone is there everyone's there just to just to collaborate share their music Mm. but it is about the initiative mm. the bigger question is who is willing to put their foot down and take that step to lead yeah. Yeah. because i don't see any leaders right. i see a lot of musicians female yeah. but i don't see anyone who's like hey man i'm going to do this and i also understand why it's not an easy job like yeah. that gig that we did at 432 that was tough that mm. like the only reason why i never redid it even though i want to mm. was simply because i'm like that's a lot of effort that mm. you're putting in um and it's tough especially when you're a musician yourself because then then the question relies on you right do i look after my own stuff or do i try to create a balance of for other girls yeah. out there do yeah. i have even enough money to support this yeah. you know a lot of things that come into play but i don't think that we lack yeah. female singers or yeah. musicians yeah. yeah so then i think let's come back to like what has the post nescafe era been like because obviously nescafe was a great launch pad for you and yeah. i mean i myself discovered that nice. you existed through oh, nescafe cool. That's and cool. and you know i'm still a fan thanks um, <laughs> and that kind of there was this confidence that you put out i don't i don't know if that was whether you were genuinely confident or is yeah. what you learned to present yourself as a but it was both, I think. yeah yeah i think post nescafe season 4 to be precise the all girl band to be precise hmm. so many things in my life changed in terms of professionalism like my career and also my personal life because that was 2016 was a huge turning point hmm. um that was the year i lost my mom that was the year i started writing that was the year I became a wild child. <laughs> that was also the year I started properly earning. So hmm. I think that was I, again I must have been 2021 and so when you're at that age and you start earning well for yourself at that point where you don't have the responsibilities to pay rent or yeah. bills or you know I mean I used to help around the house as much as I could but I think I it's like it's all coming back to me right now yeah. as i'm thinking about it but it, it was a lot of turning points there was a lot of big events that happened in my life there was a lot of grief mm. and a lot of that grief resulted in in i wouldn't say obnoxious or out of the ordinary um harkatein mm. but it was definitely a lot of indulgence in in many things yeah. uh, wrong crowd yeah. uh, people um the things that 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 would excite me and not excite me hmm. i did definitely lose a track of consistency in terms of rehearsing practicing making music writing i mean that was the year that strong also came out yeah and that was also the year of me launching um 
myself as a face for mm. for a brand mm. and that brand could be any brand mm. be it uh, a top multinational mm. uh you know brand or something local or something anything that whatever big or small it was just the time when i realized that okay i guess i have that factor and yeah. obviously at the time i didn't know how to cash in on it mm. and i didn't know what i was doing but primarily i remember the one stable thing that that i kept was that music is my primary job yeah. it is it is what i want to do it is what i will do mm. and everything else is secondary mm. you know i i think i at that time i really just took up anything and everything except for acting because i knew the reality of of the kind of acting i would want to do if ever that was something i would step into mm. um but it was just that was i think the only thing that i yeah. low key left out um yeah. so yeah it was it was good there were a lot of ups and downs lots of opportunities lots of learning experiences i got to work with the late Farhad Humayo mm -hmm. for a long time as well learned so much like at one point he had sort of like also adopted me which was great because he was that father figure in the music yeah. cycle for me you know and were you living in Lahore at any point I was living in Lahore at yeah. this time yeah. and his partner at the time she was managing me okay. so it was a very close knit mm -hmm. sort of circle and we that was the period where I a obviously learned so much musically and he was he was the old, he was <laughs> for Hadamaya was a person who taught me what quantization is <laughs> can you imagine like these are like little little things that yeah. i picked up um at the time but i also realized that that was the time where i wanted to become independent and slowly was walking towards yeah that line yeah and when it came towards personal experiences in my life you know as an artist you reflect whatever you go through in your own personal life you kind of translate that into in my case music mm. so went through all of that as well learned so much about character yeah and how to assess someone's and um learned a lot about narcissism yeah and how evident it is when you're with someone yeah. uh be it in a relationship or a friendship like you know these little factors really started to come into play mm -hmm. and i think i was a bit distracted and my attention was a bit diverted mm -hmm. that i not deliberately but i kind of ended up taking like this weird break yeah where i wasn't writing i wasn't performing i wasn't really making any music mm -hmm. and there were these two years where i really felt like okay like i'm losing time yeah you know i was 23 at the time when i realized that i am done with lahore done with islamabad i mean i was done with islamabad ages ago yeah. but at that point i was obviously living in islamabad my family is there mm. so there was so many new experiences my brother was getting married my dad wanted to get remarried um you know i was working i was making money i was pretty much living off of whatever money i had made mm. till then mm. and so my thoughts and my mind and everything started just cloud like becoming a cloud mm. and that was the moment um in 2018 december was when i started thinking that okay my actions are getting out of control and i'm going to have to suffer the consequences and yeah. no and i and this is that moment where i can't complain to anyone mm. because this is my doing yeah whatever that indulgence was yeah i mean luckily i never got into like terrible drugs or anything i think that yeah. was that one thing that even at the back of my head i would think that okay ye rasta nahi lena like you cannot right. divert and get into this side of the mm. industry because yeah. that is a very evident Yeah. factor that yeah. plays into any music and or film industry in the world. Yeah. You know, so that was definitely one thing that that I would you know continuously tell myself that ye nahi karna yahan nahi pahunchna. Mm. Lekin I could see myself falling off track and I remember end of December literally 31st of December mm. on New Year's Eve where I just looked at myself in the mirror. I was at a friend's house and it was a really sad evening. because you know how new year's eve is so overrated now yeah so i really took it to the heart where i was just like what am i doing with my life and that was the spontaneous decision that i made that okay i'm going to look into getting out of mm. islamabad maybe karachi i don't know again didn't know any better i was mm. 23 i didn't mm. know any better i didn't know 
کہ کیا کرنا ہے کس طرح فار می اٹ واز آلویز ایٹ دا ٹائم اٹ واز آلویز لائک اوہ کراچی یا آئی مین ہاؤ بیڈ کڈ بی ہاؤ ڈیفیکلٹ کڈ بی آئی ڈیٹ سکس ایئرس ان لاہور بٹ یا اینڈ دین مارچ ٹوینٹی نائنٹین آئی موو ڈیئر اینڈ over four years now and mm. it's been incredible I mean I think that was when I met you as well yeah. and I got to know about Aleph and I and 432 was just becoming a thing I think yeah. by the end of 2019 it had been established yeah so I think company really matters mm-hmm. and that was when I was able to grow as an artist learn things as an artist work on my craft and surround myself with people that I knew that I would be comfortable with mm. and where we would benefit off of one another in terms of music. Yeah. So what do you feel it is about Karachi other than the fact that it wasn't where you grew up, you know, yeah. so it freed you from, I guess, your family obligations yeah. Yeah. and things like that. But what is it about Karachi that is different than because you've I mean, it's rare that someone has spent significant time in Islamabad, Lahore and Karachi, yeah. right? You either you stick to one yeah. and you, you go with it. But so how would you characterize Karachi in, in comparison to those places? I mean, this is where the big dogs are at, right? Yeah. And it's, it's I think it's people. Yeah. And a lot of the times when people say that, oh, the people of Karachi are just different. I don't. No, when I hear it from another person, I'm just like, well, but what do you mean by that? Like, what mm. is your true definition of, oh, it's the people. For me, it was the people, but in terms of the vast amount of uh, things that people are doing here. Yeah. You know, like, we don't have a community center in mm. Islamabad or in Lahore, for that matter. Mm. Just last week, I was speaking to Asfar and yeah. I was like, oh, like, where could we throw a gig if we threw a gig in, in Lahore? Yeah. Like an intimate night, similar mm. to what we do at 432. Where could we do it? Yeah. They're like, huh, cafes, eh? I'm like, yeah, but that's so 2010. Like, I'm so over that. Like, that yeah, is... and, and they're run by people who run cafes. They're not exactly. Run they're by not by run by musicians. Or art-minded people. So that is yeah. definitely number one that <clears throat> yeah. played into, into that factor that, okay, this is a place where I could probably fit in because we have a larger community here. Mm. And also... Apart from venues and, and the community, I think this is a great city to prep you if you want to move abroad. Yeah. As an artist, yeah. as, a, as a freelancer. Mm. This is a fantastic place. Mm. And, and by fantastic, it could mean either good or bad. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you have <laughs> you know? to go through the breadth of experiences. And right? get out of your comfort zone. I mean, I remember on my fourth day... In Karachi, again, completely, I had like 20,000 rupees in my bank account. Obviously, I drained everything <laughs> before that because I was a very wild uh, rebel. Um, <laughs> I don't even want to say child. I yeah. mean, you're 23. You can't be a child when you're 23. You have yeah. to grow up at some point. But I, I, really, I really came here with zero plan. And on my fourth or third or fourth day, I remember looking at my partner and being like, Wow. Uh, every every person for themselves here mm. like you're on your own no yeah. you know i think i got so used to the hospitable uh gestures in islamabad and and lahore of like people just being like oh welcoming and i mean not that i'm saying that no one's welcoming here mm. everyone's welcoming here mm. um that's also just our pakistani culture yeah you know because we are very family oriented yeah but when i say every person for themselves it's more like Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll give you a boost, but then you're on your own. Yeah. I think in Lahore and Islamabad, I was so sheltered by yeah. my friends and family there mm. that I just would be under the illusion that I'm doing everything myself, but at mm. the back end, it's something that's There's a machine running, you yeah. You know, it could be my brother <laughs> or some friend or some producer. Mm. Um, over here, I definitely learned how to, how to deal with things on my own. Uh, career wise and also just being a woman living like I think finding an apartment was that period where I'm like okay this is not a piece of cake this is not yeah. as easy how people this is why a lot of friends from Islamabad couldn't make it here yeah that's another factor that I realized yeah a lot of my friends like once I went back for a month and, and my friends were like Hogi bas hogi. And I'm like, what? No, I'm just meeting my family, man. I haven't yeah. met them for like a year. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. 
I mean, it can be an an, uh, an intimidating place for Absolutely. you know a young yeah. girl yeah. on their own trying yeah. to make it. I mean, know? it's intimidating for a dude, let alone yeah, exactly. a girl. You know, exactly. um, so that was that was definitely that was definitely something that kept me here because I also enjoyed it. I think the liberation of when you're able to achieve something out of the ordinary or out of your ordinary you want to challenge yourself more so mm-hmm. i got comfortable with the idea of challenging mm-hmm. myself um in different ways um yeah and yeah. i think like you you helped me quite a bit too actually you, i borrowed his guitar for like two years um which was a great <laughs> play it, which was which was good because people don't do that people don't no. people don't don't aren't comfortable with with sharing that's yeah. that's another factor that i also realized here that people are very angsty about yeah their things and which is fair yeah um but i wasn't used to that mm. because i was so used to what's mine is yours yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know and and just earlier before we recorded I, we were talking about boundaries yeah so that's another thing that i learned mm. in karachi and it helps so much when it comes to work because as a freelancer you have to put a pause at certain things right mm. like okay this is my time mm. and this from this time to this time i don't want to be um catering to whatever issue you think yeah uh is more important than my mental health right yeah. now for example it's about a balance right i mean like yeah. we were talking earlier you know like for me initially when setting up this place it came from the feeling that yes there's lots of talented people here and and whatever but you know a lot of them have access to skills and equipment mm-hmm. and things which if only they were more open about yeah sharing yeah then maybe the community would as a whole yeah. do better yeah. you know and, and i also think the mindset <laughs> of a community if they just get out the money factor yeah you can achieve so much like obviously it's understood man like everybody has bills to pay everyone has rent everyone has this that this that responsible nothing works without money which is yeah. uh which i'm not invalidating at all but i think the mindset of a joint effort needs mm. to change a little bit here because people the only way you can see a difference or succeed in order to achieve that difference mm. is if you bud your heads together which is why i love zahid bhai yeah. because with him it's it's like you know we didn't even talk about percentages or money or nothing mm. leading up to our show till like two days before the show he's mm. like oh yeah by the way like you know just out of curiosity mm. what did we decide and i'm like oh shit okay yeah 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 you're right let's talk about that yeah. because you're so into the genuine collaboration that these things don't matter yeah. till you know that they obviously you know yeah but it's, it's but there's like, also like a fine line it it is a very fine line because you know um at the one end it's such a liberating thing when people are working together with you and they're not money minded and they're not asking those questions but sometimes and often times these same people will do that a couple of times and then yeah. realize that they didn't get what yeah. perhaps they were owed and then they become closed up again yeah. and that is generally what karachi yeah is like because yeah. everyone has probably had Yeah. some experience where yeah. they realize that they need to need to put their wall yeah. down yeah. you know but unfortunately <laughs> that also doesn't lead to more opportunities so you yeah. need to find like a balance a balance yeah you know and like you know with Farhan and 432 as well i commend uh, that man yeah i mean he he's doing all <laughs> kinds know. of shows shows that are sold doing. out shows that have no one showing no, up yeah, yeah. you know but he's just pushing on it's it's truly inspirational and i'm not just saying that because he's our friend i genuinely mean it like like it's 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 really it's and i've known him also for many many years mm. so i've also seen a lot of successes and yeah. a lot of failures that he's been through which he owns up to 100% yeah and he like also laugh it off now yeah but that doesn't mean i won't tease him about it yeah because he is like you know but i commend him because that is the true essence of of at least in my my definition i feel like that's a that's a that's a decent amount of mm. essence of like 
how to let your community know okay like main to kahin nahi ja raha ha meri jagah yahi hai it's like i've done half of the effort now it's for you to come and bring in your ideas yeah. and use the space so that not just only because it's i remember in the beginning it was like whoa we got to get people to know what 432 is people mm. know what 432 is yeah people know what what that place is people know what it stands for mm. what kind of events happen there but it's also like now it's also like there's so much more that they can do yeah right it's got to be a two way street yeah Yeah. Which is why I know at the back of my mind that if I ever want to experiment, I know mm. I can go there. Mm. And I think that is what an artist needs. Yeah. A little bit of like a like a not dependency but like you know one of those free fall Yeah, like uh, you try different things yeah. if it doesn't work out it's okay, yeah. you know, you can yeah. try again, you know. Experimenting. And that's kind of like what's also um attractive about Karachi for being an artist, you know. Yeah. Like there's so much here that can be done yeah but it's not done yet yeah. so the the field is open like it's are open. you going to be the one to do it yeah. you know yeah um so you know koshish jari hai basically <laughs> yeah <laughs> but what i like you know about your post um nas cafe career as it's yeah. developing you know is that you've consistently put out singles yeah. um I've you've tried. consistently and like you said you know it's it's all when i listen to them i was listening to some of the songs before this just yeah. to refresh um they very obviously seem to be drawing from personal experiences yeah. and there's an honesty in it you know which is as a you know producer who's promoting trying to promote artists to write more authentically yeah you know that's nice to see and yeah. but i think that's also missing on a larger scale in most of the artists around yeah like a lot of people are doing things based on who's paying them to do what you know exactly yes and it's yeah. whereas you have a balance whereas you know you're doing the yeah. branded stuff and you're the face for a lot of things yeah. but at the same time you've got this line of yeah. your own music your yeah. own expression i think i think i at, uh, i mean yeah that's a great way to put it because i i realized like when strong came out and people were so moved by it hmm. the number one factor wasn't just because it was a song i wrote about my mom and her journey it was it was the fact that it was so honest and yeah. raw and that was when i realized that that is the kind of artist that i am i can have all the influences in the world but at the end of the day it is what i want to put out there yeah so it took me a long time to agree with the fact that this is the kind of artist i am and i'm okay if if the masses don't want to listen mm. to it mm. it's it's okay i don't i don't i didn't start writing or start being comfortable with the idea of sharing my music with people i didn't start because i wanted yaar ye gana hit ho jaye na to bas like that was never the intention yeah. because i think that it's a mindset if you go in with that mindset often times the opposite will happen hmm. because you're just dependent on that manifestation yeah you got to do half the work also in order for that to come into play yeah you know and so i think there was a point where i'm like okay theek hai ab main apne liye self release karungi and i don't care about the numbers i'm mm. not going to get myself distracted there woh baat hai it's like a fine line i care and i don't care about the numbers so i don't care about the numbers when it comes to like me sharing my music yeah but when it comes to content creation mm. that is where you'll see me go like oh my god i lost 200 followers shit why <laughs> but that's also because i'm so dependent on my instagram because it's like that's my office that's my 9 to 5 that's how yeah, i yeah the money. brands are going and looking right? how you know what your traction is what is your is engagement like. yeah. what is your this and that but when it comes to music i i just i just think that if i'm honest with myself hmm. and not even with my audience because the audience will automatically be captivated if they see that honesty hmm. right they'll be able to um resonate if hmm. they see that that rawness that honesty hmm. If I, as long as I'm on that track, I should be okay. Yeah. And as long as I'm practicing, like I try to practice every single day. Mm. And I've made it a point where where if I don't practice at least before going to bed, I mm. should mm. try something or two just so that I can it's like going to the gym. Yeah. <laughs> it's like when you skip a day then you're just like, "Oh my god." Or if you skip 3 days then you're like, "Oh my god." Yeah. So I mean, it's at also the end not, of day it's a vocal muscle, yeah, right? It's also not just consistency with throwing music out. It's yeah. it's how consistent are you with yourself? Yeah. You know? Yeah. I mean, so why don't you tell us a little bit about the 
songwriting process for you? Is it, have you standardized it where it's a certain process that happens every time or does it just happen differently? It changes every now yeah. and then. Um, nowadays when I'm writing it, so I started music production mm -hmm. because uh, last year, was it last year? Yeah, last winter, I put my foot down. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was dealing with a lot of um, emotional uh, incompetence is not the right word here because mm. my last producer was pretty, mm. pretty top of his game, but mm. there was just too many personal things that was coming in the way that made me feel like I'm not being prioritized as an artist right, right now. Yeah. And we're just doing it because we have a commitment to it. So the, mm. the, the, you'll notice in like a couple of my tracks that's, mm. that is released, there's still a bit of honesty there, but there's yeah. also a lot of like, it's just happening. It was just made, so it's There was a lot of that as mm. well. Mm. So I had to put my foot down at one point and... Um, you know, I, over the years, I was very blessed to be to be surrounded with amazing people in my life who, especially my brother and my partner, they're always just wanting mm. to shower me with stuff that will be beneficial for me in my music. Yeah. So I, under the span of, I want to say, two years, I was able to create like a basic home studio setup, nice. which helped in so many ways because obviously the practicing part, yeah. you know, came into great play. Yeah. because of um having just a keyboard um and then and then like i started picking up on jingles and stuff like that so i got comfortable with the idea of making demos yeah that was like my first stepping stone yeah so when i put my foot down <laughs> in february i went to was it february february or january i went to Sambad and zoha zuberi mm -hmm. love her she just like gave me a pep talk mm. where she's just like what are you doing like, why are you dependent on so-and-so to make your music? You know how to write. You know how to play. You yeah. have, like, you comp your own vocals. Mm -hmm. You track your own vocals. Mm -hmm. So you have some sort of sense of how to record. Yeah. What's stopping you? Yeah. What is, where is your confidence you in that? Why step? Yeah, why yeah. is your confidence lacking in that only? Hmm. And so I really thought about it. And I'm just like, okay, yeah, I need to stop dwelling over the shit that's been done. Because there's nothing that I can bring or reverse this time. Mm -hmm. So I got super inspired and I came home and I spent an entire week just, I was like, okay, here it is. I've made three songs and the writing process of it is, is just so random, man. I don't know how to tell you. I have no like, like fix. so, so I mean, dude, for you to, Lyrics come first usually or, or the melody? Yeah, lyrics, sometimes lyrics. Hmm. Um, melody will also come into play. Vocal melody and lyrics, normally they just come together. Yeah. Um, but the music part comes like when I'm sitting and I'm practicing random songs for my vocals. Mm -hmm. um, I'll just play around with different chord progressions. And yeah, and things will fit. And then things will just fit. Yeah. And, and I just record, I have like hours and hours of tracks of me just singing gibberish yeah, yeah of you course. know just of course. gibber and um I, and i and i've also realized that i enjoy writing with someone because mm. it's just so easy to bounce off ideas yeah um but sometimes that's also that's also you got to find a balance in that because yeah and you have to find the chemistry chemistry you know so lately i've been enjoying um writing by myself actually Hmm. It's it has been quite liberating also knowing that like because I reached out to Sinan and I was like hey so um I, I produce like three songs yeah <laughs> and he's like why do you sound like that I'm like just because like I don't want you to judge them <laughs> he's just like why would I judge them I'm like because like you know this shit better than I do <laughs> and so I asked him to master my album uh, well my EP and yeah. he he was quite, I think he was impressed. I mean, he was like, okay, this yeah. this sounds really good. Not bad for like a first. So you mixed them yourself? I didn't mix them. Okay. I got him to mix it. Okay. Um, but I played everything. Yeah. Um, one song he featured where I was just like, hey man, I don't know what to do. Just do it. Yeah. It's like, yeah. you know, because obviously you don't want to push. 
Yeah, you want it to be natural and yeah. organic and stuff. So a lot of it was natural and yeah. organic, which is why I felt so right. So, so do you find now that you are doing more production or pre-production um, on your own, do you find that that's making the vision of what the song should be clearer for you? Are you more like, um, like you know, a lot of singers and songwriters come with a melody and vocal and give it to a producer and then they don't know what's going to happen with it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And then they might come with two, three different versions and they'll just pick one. Yeah. And that's it. Yeah. You know, but sometimes when the artist has a little more yeah. confidence and knows what they're doing, then yeah. they can direct the producer like, this is yeah. what I want. Just execute. You know? Yeah. yeah. I The latter for sure. Like yeah. I definitely do feel more confident when it comes to me explaining what I'm hearing yeah. or what I, because obviously the initial, like even in a demo, you have that control. I have that control where mm. I'm like, okay, these are the kinds of sounds that I want. These mm. are the kind of strings that I want to be, uh, that I want to have playing at the back yeah, and yeah. like, you know, vice versa. But with, with um often like there are times where i don't know what i'm going to get mm. you know but then also i also like if i'm working with a producer say you i would share the demo with you yeah and then i i would obviously prefer to be by your side if you're working on different yeah, instrumentation I'm trying different ideas i would love like that stuff excites me the most yeah it's, I love it's actually the being part most of that. fun part i love being part creation. of that process a because i'm learning yeah a lot and b because you're present it's also like it's my track you yeah. know i want to be present when i'm listening to even in the mixing and mastering process mm. like mm. i don't know jack shit mm. about any of the EQs and all of these. Yeah, but you know if it but sounds know, right to you. But I, but I want to, like, I know what I want to be, like, what when I listen to this track as mm. an outsider, yeah. as a third person, I would be like, oh, this is what I hear, or this yeah. is what I want to hear, yeah. you know? So it's cool. It's 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 nice, but definitely is a bit scary, and also, like, I need, I am a bit of a, I also lose track. I get a bit too lost in the influencer world because i'm yeah. just like always like i gotta make money i gotta make money yeah um so sometimes i do need a bit of like a slap on the face not literally but like mm. a little, <laughs> little like hey girl what are you doing get mm. back on track um, yeah, i've also noticed like so you've put out a fair amount of singles but maybe i've just missed them but n most of them don't seem to have videos yeah right yeah. so is that a conscious decision or just a fact of like not having resources to do a video or yeah you know. not having resources i mean and not even resources it's more like making a video is not cheap <laughs> it is not, it's I not mean, cheap if, if you haven't done it yourself you would be shocked at in how this expensive economy, it can be <laughs> in this economy i mean i mean i made a video for one of my tracks called fantasy that was like zero money hmm. you know i mean perks of having a cinematographer as your partner you think, uh, uh, by the way, you one of would the best. Think, <laughs> yeah, I mean, that was. Good. I didn't say that, but that was in the back of my mind. Like, you know, you have everything. <laughs> you would think, <laughs> but but you know, he he was very supportive uh, when I went up to him and I'm like, hey, I want to do, I want to make a video, but can we do it at home and do it very frugally? Like zero. Money? <laughs> yes. Like you have a Sony camera, don't you? Yeah. Um. So that was one one factor for sure. But but otherwise, it's it's really tough. I think to answer your yeah. back of the mind question, yeah. Mo and I we've been wanting to make music videos, but he obviously comes in with the whole like, hey, I made a budget sheet. I'm like, I don't want to see it. <laughs> I, don't I mean, he's coming from a world it. where he can yeah. he can. And have then, the budget sheet. Exactly. <laughs> and then also, like, I know that he has some mad, crazy ideas. And I know that, like, if I'm not able to fund it the mm. way the vision requires the funding, yeah. it's just not going to do justice to his ideas. So then yeah. I I take 10 steps back. Then, yeah. I, then I refrain from even thinking close to right. asking him. But I also think it's it's a lot of timing. Yeah. Like, the, the one video that we did do together... That was also just like random. I think that's the most, that's how I would personally like to work with my partner. Yeah. I don't want it to be super worky because yeah. it's also not really good to I'll gel. Just kill the vibe. Yeah. You know. 
um but it's it wasn't really a part of it was also like hey man back in the day like you know in the 90s we would just release one music video or two at most and yeah. then the rest are singles yeah so i think i'm still like i have that slight mindset but yeah i think a, yeah no i one. think i think a song like you will know or like one would know that okay this song deserves a bloody music video Yeah, this you, can't you, you just be a singer. Usually do. You know? Usually do. Like if you write a bunch of songs, you're like this is the one, you know. This is the one, especially like when it's obviously I would love nothing more to have all of my songs have videos because the visual experience also enhances the audio experience, but mm. but I think I would most definitely choose it in a in a way where I would think twice and be like, "Okay, this could or but this could it." Yeah. but this should you know yeah. and then that should i will proactively work my way hmm. towards it like one hmm. of my songs all i hear hmm. i initially wrote it with um my last producer we wrote that song because i was like i want to write a track about keyboard warriors <laughs> and how you know what i'm talking about <laughs> yes i know very well <laughs> so i was like you know and 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 the hook of that song was really interesting because i it just started with with me we were on zoom because he lives in australia so we just started i was just like hey what if we just do all i hear is na 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 like you know <laughs> like that is all i hear and that actually became the hook yeah. of the track yeah and so when the song came out of play it gave me super billy eilish vibes i was like okay this song is dark as hell yeah. and it's ki video banni chahiye huh. so that was when i proactively like got on my zone walked up to um Uh, Sara Sefi who was the CEO of Drama Queen Productions and mm. she's this she's just this super driven like wants to make like direct videos and like she was so passionate that mm. I called her over one day and I was like this is not final but this is it and can you do it mm. can you make this happen mm. for me and she just went like girl I will get us a sponsor also mm. then that was a fun little collaboration that we I think as an independent artist if you Unless you have like bajillions of rupees in your bank account, yeah, then you can pull it off. But yeah. otherwise, you need a funding. Yeah, you know, actually, like, that was going to be my next question. Yeah. Since you have these, as we mentioned earlier, like these two sides, one that is doing the branded stuff and the sponsored stuff, etc., and one that is pursuing your own art. Yeah. Um, do you see a future where you can meld the two in some way and get those guys to? not direct you and you direct them what they want it's a tough you know? it's a tough little swirl for yeah. sure because i've tried yeah. i've i've really uh boy i've tried when i got that budget sheet yeah. <laughs> i was like yeah. okay let me let me yeah. see where i can get this much money from cuz i sure don't have it um and even I mean, like if you look at it purely like mathematically or whatever it's just ultimately i just think it's a matter of your profile getting to the point yeah. where you can dictate the terms you know that and also <clears throat> it 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 can't be i one thing i realized is that not every brand in fact no brand hmm. to in my experience would dare and dare is like a very crucial word here <laughs> would dare to to fund something in like to fund something artsy unless it has a little bit of play in towards obviously their benefit so yeah it, it's it seems like it's always easier to get sponsors to support live events as opposed to a music video yeah. financing or like an album or something a passion project yeah 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 because again i mean you know when when people are even it's a live show and they've got their branding up there and it's the demographic that they're looking for kind of makes sense yeah. but with music videos they want to place their products and what not and it just doesn't yeah. make sense for yeah. us it's tough for sure so you've also had um a stint with uh an actual live band so <laughs> I, i saw you perform my yeah. 432 with them yeah. that was how was, how was that experience um well the performance that you came and saw was dope because i had by was playing bass and yeah. that was very random hmm. because uh the initial person who was playing bass with me at the time was unavailable mm-hmm. and also I wasn't going to do a full band mm-hmm. show that evening yeah that was just going to be me and my 
instrumental tracks at the back. Yeah. Um, but then Jasser was there and, and he was just like, what are you doing? And mm. then we asked Arsal if he was free and Zahid Bhai was already coming. So then we just backstage told <laughs> Zahid Bhai like the guitar chords. And yeah. Zahid being Zahid, he picked up on it quite quickly. Yeah. So that was a fun, fun, fun experience. I mean, it's always, as a singer, it's always convenient Mm. and easy um, to be playing with a live band because mm. then your entire focus is also on at least my focus is on how do I pick the crowd up yeah excuse me when I'm playing if even if it's just acoustic it's tough because then I'm thinking of time I'm thinking of what's the next chord what's the next line yeah okay I look up and I'm like all right the audience is dying like how do I bring them back up like it's like an accumulation of 20 things yeah happening and coming into play all at the same time so it's definitely more convenient but having said that it's also just convenient when you do it on your own yeah there's you the know, pros and like, cons there, there are pros and cons i mean with my experience of band mates i try to treat everyone equal hmm. um but you know in this day and age it's very different to how it used to be when i used to have a band i used to play uh, back in Islamabad, they used to play with a bunch of musicians for diplomatic uh, events. Mm -hmm. And so it's so much more different as then than now. I feel like there will be two out of four people who will be like, yes, we want to be consistent with practice timings or mm. this and that. Mm. Then the other two out of four will just also be very nonchalant. Mm. I mean, this is just a generalization that yeah. I'm giving you. It's yeah. not just based on my last band. Yeah. I think my last band, I... I had to put my foot down and just be like, okay, this is A, wasting my time. Because hmm. I'm not here to listen to someone's problems. Yeah. I'm here to make money. Yeah. I'm here to work. And I'm here to make you make money. Hmm. Otherwise, what the heck would I even, yeah. you know? And I get it. I'm, I'm a pretty confrontational person. And mm -hmm. so I've also realized a lot of people here aren't. Yeah. They're very, very like non confrontational. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Which then results in a lot of emotional uh conflict. Mm -hmm. Which I'm just like, Oh my god, I don't have time for that. Because look, at the end of the day, everyone has their own shit going on. Yeah. Everyone has their own problems. Someone's kissing a tire flat okay, everything chalta is in the gear. But when you're, but when I at least expect myself to put all of that outside, mm. bahir, wo chorke, when I enter this room, mm. that's all about out there, and I'm here, and my entire focus is here, and I'm just here to do what we're supposed to do, mm. right? So when that comes, when that's interfered with X, Y, Z, mm. it becomes really tough. Yeah. It becomes very tough, and. I also looked at it from a larger perspective that I'm investing so much money, money that I don't have, mm. into food, which are basic necessities, of yeah. course, but like food, chai, um, you know, whatever, jam room. Yeah. Um, I'm not asking my bandmates to pay yeah. for that. That's yeah. that's going from my pocket because yeah. this is my show. It's yeah. my name on the yeah. on the ticket, yeah. right? Yeah. But yeah. like when that when that respect factor is not there mm. and work respect mm. then you also don't want to yeah you put yourself the in, drive yeah. then it. i'm just like okay screw it i might as well just figure this out on my own yeah you know and i have a great management team where they're super supportive they completely mm. get it they trust me blindly mm. <clears throat> i was telling you earlier when i got here about the system that i cracked yeah because i've I realize I'm like, okay, karaoke music. <laughs> that is the game. I'm Filipino, half. Yeah. This is like in my blood. Yeah. Like, mere khun ke andar hai ye. Uh. Ke like, literally the amount of times people send me karaoke memes in a week. Yeah. It's, it's like, it's like a given, you know? I'm like, okay, the audience and the specific target of audience, which are, you know, 40 and above... Yeah, for better or for worse, there is a market for it. They you know? just want a performance. They don't give a shit about your guitar solo yeah. or how well you play whatever or yeah. how in time you are. Yeah. They just want a performance. And so I found that a little bit easier hmm. than, than you know, going through the whole... Because yeah. by the end of it, I'm I'm not really making any money then. Yeah. Then I'm putting everything that I earn into a production that is very half-assed. Yeah. Pardon yeah. my... 
French. Yeah. But it is. It's because mm. if... Because, like, until unless all party members have agreed that, okay, we're not only doing this for only money, mm. hum, we're trying to grow together. Mm. Until unless we're all on that same page, it's impossible. Mm. In my opinion, I feel like it, it would be a little impossible that means one person's like, yeah, I'm going to earn money for money. And then two people are just like, no, but like, I think we can really like, if we butt our heads together, we can really get a consistent flow of gigs and, you know? Yeah. Everyone's off. It's never yeah. going to work. Yeah. I mean, it, it either does or it doesn't. And yeah. a lot of the time it doesn't, you know? Yeah. And maybe there's a time for it in the future yeah. with different people or some yeah. people, you know? Yeah. But, so, we've talked about the fact that you've released... music consistently but you haven't put out an album what's your thought no. on albums is that like do you just think that they're not as um relevant in the days of streaming that we are living in no. or is this just a herculean effort that you just haven't got to yet uh no it's not it's, i think albums are definitely still a thing hmm. Um, well, certainly in the West, there are. Oh, yeah, mean, all yeah. the biggest artists are. I mean, that's that's what I follow, other, yeah, right? Yeah. So I think when I, <clears throat> the reason every time I sit down, I'm like, I'm gonna make it out. Yeah. I also will make a song, and I'll be like, Oh my god, this is so good! At least for me, it's so good. I want it out there right now. Yeah. <laughs> so over the last six months, I've really been fighting the urge to release mm. some of the music that I have been working on. Mm. Um, but I'm also like, okay, no, just release it all together so that you can once and for all have an album mm. out there. Mm. But I think it, it's. I don't really think of either. I right. just. When I when I'm vibing to a track and I'm like, oh yes, this is dope. This yeah. needs to be out right now. Yeah. It's so trendy. It's so relevant or whatever. Mm. I'm thinking at that moment. So I I just sort of just release it. I don't really. Yeah. I mean, obviously there is planning going into it. Yeah. You know, I I'll work on the art. Yeah. I'll work on like if it requires a video, I'll work on the video. Yeah. Um, I'll do like the nitty gritty mm. promo stuff, but I've it's 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 a tough. It's like tough for me to be like, no, no, hold on to it for a sec. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's what I yeah. face or yeah. have a or had a problem with. I guess th- I can I can understand that. I mean, um, the only thing though is like you are writing from a personal space and you're writing about personal emotions, and usually they go in phases. Like you've, yeah, you know, there've been phases in your life you're dealing with lots of narcissists, and yeah, then there's yeah. that which you're writing yeah, about, yeah, and then yeah, there's yeah, loss, yeah, and yeah, which yeah, you've also yeah. been through. Um, and usually with albums, they cover that theme, right? right? Yeah. And there's like a theme, and there's a bunch of songs that yeah. are around yeah. about that thing. Yeah. Um, So it would be nice. It would be interesting to yeah. to hear an album from you also, because you do have that approach. Also, I think another uh, reason as to why I never came around to completing an album was patience. Yeah. Because writing an album is easy. That's the mm. easy part. Mm. Working on it is also a somewhat easy mm. part of the whole. It's the weight that you have to um, sort of be on one on one with. Yeah. Sometimes songs can get old for you. Yeah. By the time they like come out. Like I'm, you know? that's my fear. Where yeah. I'm like, oh man, that one song that I wrote, like, it's called Intro. Yeah. I'm like, is it, is it, is it old for me now? So I have to constantly like go back, listen to like my little version on my phone. Yeah. Put it on my speaker and be like, nope, not old. Still very, very. I can't wait for the world to hear it. Like type yeah. of feeling. As long yeah. as long as I'm feeling that way, I guess it's good. But I think a lot of it has to do with the patience because, you know, we live in a digital age. And I look at all the musicians around us who are um, making trendy music. Mm. They're like releasing one after the other. So I have this yeah. constant FOMO mm. or this fear of being left behind. Yeah. Not even of missing out. Yeah. Like being like far behind, like, you know, in a relay race, like mm. you're just trying to catch up to the next opponent or whatever. Mm. It's it's that playing in my head. Yeah. But a lot of that I feel is, down to just the you know social media kind yes. of programming yes. onto us that oh you need to be on top you need yes. to be in the front of the news feed which is why which is why in my case i've sort of balanced it by posting reels of me singing like the other day i posted yeah. a i posted a little practice session mm. i've been trying to work on my vocal runs recently and so 
I came across on my on my explore page of my mm. Instagram, I came across this video of Billie Eilish singing one of her songs live and she hits this note. Mm. And I was like, whoa, I've never heard her do that before. Mm. And so I was like, okay, I looked behind and I saw Zoha's keyboard. This was just last week in Islam. Yeah. And I saw her keyboard and I'm like, oh, let me see, well, let me see if I can do it. And then I mm. did it and, mm. I, and I recorded it. Mm. And I was like, this is content. Wow. Okay, nice. So I try to balance it yeah. in that regard, which is yeah. why now I'm a little okay with with the patience aspect of something brewing and having it brew at the right temperature yeah. kind of, you know, situation. And also people around you. Like, Sinan's been great. He's been super patient with me as well. Mm -hmm. And he's been very helpful, which is why I feel like, okay, I think we can... I, th I think it's also the people that you work with yeah. if, if following deadlines. Yeah. That's super important. Mm. Sometimes that person may not be feeling it. Mm. And then, you know, it's left behind. Mm. So it's also like, how do you handle that situation? Mm. Um, because creating an album is is easy. That's the easy part. Mm. Writing songs, in my opinion, like it's easy. But yeah. getting it out there, the execution bit is where... Yeah, that is the real challenge. All the patience, all yeah. the everything comes into play over that. And know? also like having it um, adhere to your vision and not yeah. wear off from that, yeah. you know, yeah. at any some any stage yeah. of the process. Yeah. So yeah, I think I think we're pretty <laughs> caught up <laughs> to where you where you're currently at. Yeah. Um, we have some questions, so yeah. I'm just gonna grab my phone. So we're now at the question segment where you guys sent us a few questions. Not too many this time. I think we just posted the picture a bit late. <laughs> but yeah. Um, Shayan Fessel, who is our regular, uh, asks, what do you see in the future? Oh, Lord. <laughs> uh, I see... I'm, I'm assuming that has to do with yourself. With myself, yes. I, I hope. Because <laughs> in the future, like, that's... It's very uncertain. Yeah. Um, well, I hope I'm... I'm I've moved on from from my Karachi phase. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that I'm somewhere in the world, preferably Europe. Hmm. Um, and what I do for certainly see in the future is I'm still making music. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think that'll ever die out. Where in Europe would you? Okay, like to so go? I have a couple options. Okay, <laughs> I've, 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 I've Portugal. Yeah. Denmark. I would obviously love to live in Spain, but like, that's tough. But between, ooh, the Netherlands. <laughs> and not for obvious reasons, but also because I've been there and I got, I, I was able to kind of get a little taste of the media scene there and, yeah. and I think I would be comfortable. It's a very interesting place. Yeah. There's a lot of cheese. Lots of cheese. And... and Flowers, tulips. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what Amsterdam's famous for. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, Wahaj Aleem says, love your song Strong in Levi's Live. Any tips on vocal training to sound a bit more Western? Oh. Um, listen to a lot of English music. <laughs> yeah. And mimic, mimic the way the artist is pronunciating. Pronunciating? Enunciating. Enunciating. I merged two <laughs> songs. Pronunciating. That's a cool word. You could add that to like my little <laughs> dictionary. Um, yeah, listening to a lot of English music. Yeah. Um, for accent, and uh, practicing every day. I feel like I cannot stress. Yeah. Enough on this factor. It's yeah, so. Yeah, a crucial. lot of people seem to think that you know singing comes. It may come naturally, like yeah. your voice or whatever, but the actual detail of it, the enunciation. Yeah. And like, you know, when, when I say practice, I don't mean like you you learn do, re, mi or sa, re, gamma. Uh -huh. it's, that's just the, that's a basic part hmm. of warming up your vocals. I think it has a lot to do with like, for me personally, I'll sing my most whatever song I'm vibing to that day of yeah. my favorite artist. I'll just repeat it over and over and over. It's bonus points if you know how to play an instrument because then oh, yeah. it's easy to break down notes that you mm. want to learn. Mm. Uh, it's, yeah. it's cool, but just practice, practice and listen to more English music. Yeah, it's the same Like when you're, when you're composing, are you already thinking of like 
backing parts and harmonies and things or that comes that comes that comes that comes like when everything's written all the melodies are locked and then when it comes into production Mm. also like harmony harmon harmonizing and all that isn't my most amazing forte Mm. that's like actually what i'm working on Mm. um i'm working on vocal runs now for three years i was working on comfortably singing in a lower register Mm. without losing breath so Mm. i worked on that for three years and Mm. then now i'm working on runs and harmonizing Mm. different notes and this and that yeah because that especially because you have a western style yeah. it adds so much. i would like for that to come naturally yeah yeah you know? um what is your favorite pakistani or international artist these days i think pakistani separate and then international oh boy <clears throat> pakistani artist these days how oh, that is a question <laughs> i really like hanan Hmm? Abdul Hanan. Yeah. I think he's he reminds me a little bit of the 2010 era of acoustic yeah. music. Yeah. Yeah. And songwriting music. Yeah. And he's also just a beautiful human being. Um but obviously that comes later. His music is awesome. Hmm. His sound is cool. Hmm. So yeah, I think I think Hanan would be uh the person that I'm listening to the most these nice. days. Um but then also I have like a favorite for every genre. Yeah. <laughs> Not a favorite. Hold on, relax. Not a favorite. <laughs> like a, a preferred. <laughs> oh my god, rock jam is again. Um like for obviously for hip hop, yeah. it's young stunners, they're pretty dope. Yeah. I think I like that they speak their mind. Huh. So from an artistic point of view, mm-hmm. I think that's pretty ballsy, man. You got to have a lot of confidence to be able to speak your mind yeah. for pop and acoustic it's hanan i really like natasha and orani i think she's pretty cool mm-hmm. um and for songwriting i've been really into zoha stuff and not only just because she's my friend and mm. i've known her for over a decade mm. but genuinely like i've seen that artist grow and flourish mm-hmm. to who she is today yeah and that is admirable like that is something that Hmm. you know i it, it gives me yeah. yeah and also like we pakistan's finally making good music man like mm-hmm. after a lot i think after the 90s to be fair yeah 90s early to 2000s yeah. we're finally getting with the program <laughs> yeah and there's you a know? lot more uh, variety yeah like yeah. i don't remember like hip hop was never a thing i think no. the last hip hop y thing was ep when emad ali but yeah. was was making yeah. was rapping with yeah 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 with Zulfi and Fawad Khan, you know? Like, that was yeah. the last of that. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's, it's good to see progressive. Progressive. Um, and someone, Kareem Heather, is asking, are you in for a duet song? How can I contact her officially? Oh, boy. That, <laughs> way to go and put me right at the spot. I don't I even know this guy. Yeah. Um, What's the best way to contact you <laughs> for that? Don't. I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, do not put that in. I'm kidding you guys if you put that in. I get enough hate. Um, I don't know, man. Like, send me your music. Yeah. And if I'm vibing, then yeah, someone yeah. or I will reach out to you. Um, you were the Spotify equal ambassador for a month. How was that? Oh my God, that was... That was a lot of fun. That was, that was surreal. That was an opportunity that I knew I was yeah. going to get. Yeah. Because it was just one of those things where I'm like, "Yeah, the whole guy, obviously." <laughs> and then it didn't for one year and I'm just like, "What am I doing with my life? I need to like bring down the confidence a little little. I need to humble myself." Mm. Mm. <laughs> then at the Spotify rap event that they had in I want to say November December, mm. uh the team was here and Khan from Spotify took me to the side and he's like, "Hey man, I'm just going to make this quick." uh you'll get an official email but like you know just one on one like what do you think how do you feel and i said yes and obviously having having to see that campaign run for a year prior i knew ki kya kya hoga yeah, yeah. cuz like you know every month i checked times square and all that i knew times square was going to happen i knew i was going to have to send in a few videos a few photos answer a few questions yeah but when it was all coming to play it was like i was experiencing obviously i was experiencing it for the first time but it was like all new to me yeah so that definitely made me feel 
less shitty about myself <laughs> mm. as an artist because it was also it also happened around a time where I wasn't the most this was pre me learning to produce and right. pre putting my foot down right. right so this was that phase where I felt very neglected betrayed mm. didn't feel too good about myself as a musician I felt like I had become a sellout yeah and not a sell out in music but just generally like i felt like i had sold my soul to just endorsing mm. and doing like these small ad campaigns for instagram mm. i was like this is just what people know me as now no mm. one knows me as a singer anymore mm. so it was definitely it was the timing of it was amazing and i'm grateful and i think we need not just spotify to do that but we generally need more people to appreciate women the way this campaign yeah has been you know yeah. set around yeah. Yeah and did you experience um uh like a change or a step change in traction on Spotify yeah, and stuff on your sure. on your music For sure. For sure. Absolutely. Great. I think people became more accepting towards the genre. Yeah. A little bit. Yeah. Yeah, cuz it is I mean there's not too many people doing your specific yeah. kind of music yeah. uh, locally at least, yeah. you know. So that's good. Um How was the Dubai Expo 2020 experience? That was awesome. That was also pretty random, not going to lie. Again, it was one of those things that I just knew was going to come my way, but not like out of me being super like overly confident. It was yeah. just that I was already in talks with the people from Dubai Expo when it was initially supposed to happen, hmm. but then obviously COVID happened and then yada yada yada, stuff, yada. it was delayed. So I wasn't really banking on it until one day I just got a random call mm. from their marketing head and they're like, "Hey, what are you doing on so and so November so and so 20 so and so?" and I'm just like, "That's like in four days. Uh, nothing." <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, you can take the Pakistan out of Pakistan, but can't take the Pakistani out of the Pakistan. <laughs> like, you know what I'm trying to say? I probably yeah. like jumbled that thing, but it was one of those moments where it was extremely last minute. Yeah. Um, but overall surreal. I mean, that was my first show after two years. Oh, really? So to have that at such a big platform on their Jubilee stage was yeah. incredible. I made Fessel Kapadia cry. Um, <laughs> that was that was another, memorable. Yeah, which I felt bad because I remember I walked out and um, my friend came in and she was just like, drop whatever you're doing right now. I'm like, what? I just played a whole set. Can I get five minutes? She's like, just drop it. That's like body or what I jacket with him below and I'm just like why <laughs> why is he crying I didn't know what to do I was like why is he crying I was like it's because you keep singing that song that makes everybody cry <laughs> and I'm like oh shit but yeah. like it was but there so this audience was so far away like yeah. how did I even she was like just stop asking questions go and then I met him so that was pretty cool the nice, Bay Expo nice. was it was a great 72 hours <laughs> nice well That's all the questions we have. Thank you yeah. so much for your Thanks. time. It's a lot of fun yeah. and got to know little things that I didn't know. Yeah, a little catch up sesh too. <laughs> yeah, and do drop in your comments, feedback and obviously follow Maria, check out her music if you haven't and we'll see you next time. Bye.